All right, welcome back. In this lesson, I'd like to talk about the AWS Key Management Service, or KMS. This is the most important service in AWS if you need to perform any kind of encryption. So let's jump right in. KMS is a regional managed service that makes it easy for you to create and control the encryption keys used to encrypt your data. KMS manages what are called Customer Master Keys, or CMKs. A CMK is a logical representation of a key. It's a pointer or reference to some underlying cryptographic material. The CMKs you create exist in a region in AWS and never leave that region or KMS at all. KMS is ideal for encrypting S3 objects or even database passwords and API keys stored in Systems Manager Parameter Store. CMKs can encrypt and decrypt data up to 4 kilobytes in size. And KMS is integrated with most AWS services. Now with KMS, you pay per API call. So API calls like listing your keys, encrypting data, decrypting, or re-encrypting data, you'll pay per each of these API calls. And KMS supports audit capability using CloudTrail. Those audit logs are delivered to S3. This helps make it easier to satisfy your compliance requirements. Now it's important to know that KMS is a FIPS 140-2 level 2 service. FIPS is a US government computer security standard used to approve cryptographic modules. Level 2 means you just have to show evidence of tampering. There is a Level 3, which is supported by the Cloud HSM product. Level 3 has even more stringent security mechanisms than Level 2, and I do cover that in a separate lesson. But know the distinction between Level 2 and Level 3, and on the exam, if you see FIPS 140-2 Level 2, the answer is probably something to do with KMS. Now we have three types of CMKs. The first is an AWS Managed CMK. And these CMKs are free. These are created automatically when you first create an encrypted resource in an AWS service. You can track the usage of an AWS managed CMK, but the lifecycle and permissions of the key are managed on your behalf by KMS. Next, we have customer managed CMKs. These are ones that only you can create. Customer managed CMKs give you full control over the lifecycle and permissions that determine who can use the key and under which conditions. Cryptographic best practices discourage extensive reuse of encryption keys, so key rotation is important. And finally, we have AWS-owned CMKs. These are a collection of CMKs that an AWS service owns and manages for use in multiple AWS accounts. These are not in your AWS account, but an AWS service can use its AWS-owned CMKs to protect the resources in your account. But you can't view, use, track, or audit any of these. Now, there are two types of encryption that apply to CMKs, symmetric and asymmetric, and I'll go through the differences between both. When you create a customer master key in KMS, by default, you get a symmetric CMK. This is where you have the same key that's used for both encryption and decryption. That encryption algorithm is based on the AES-256 standard. And with a symmetric CMK, your data never leaves AWS unencrypted you have to call the KMS APIs to use these CMKs. All the AWS services that are integrated with KMS use symmetric CMKs, and you'll use a symmetric CMK to encrypt, decrypt, and re-encrypt data. You can also use these symmetric CMKs to generate data keys, data key pairs, and random byte strings. In a few minutes, I'll show you a demo where we use symmetric CMKs at the command line. You can also use symmetric CMKs to import your own key material. So now let's take a look at asymmetric keys. An asymmetric CMK represents a mathematically related public key and private key pair. You can give the public key to anyone, even if they're not trusted, but the private key must be kept secret. This is actually how SSL certificates work. Asymmetric CMKs are based on the RSA and elliptic curve cryptography ECC algorithms. The ECC algorithm is newer and is generally considered more secure than the older RSA algorithm. With asymmetric CMKs, the private key never leaves AWS unencrypted. You must call the KMS APIs to use the private key. You could download the public key and use it outside of AWS. And these are most often used outside of AWS by users who can't call KMS APIs. Those AWS services that are integrated with KMS do not support asymmetric CMKs. You have to use the symmetric ones. And these asymmetric CMKs are most often used to sign messages and verify signatures. So when you create a CMK programmatically with the KMS API, including through the AWS SDKs and command line tools, 
you have the option of providing the key policy for the new CMK. If you don't provide one, KMS creates one for you. It'll look a lot like the one you see here on the screen. This default key policy has one policy statement that gives the AWS account, the root user, that owns the CMK, full access to the CMK, and enables IAM policies in the account to allow access to the CMK. Now pay close attention to the key policies attached to your keys. If you accidentally delete this statement or change its permissions such that the account, the root user, can't access the key, you'll have to contact AWS support to regain access, so be very careful. So here's an example policy that you can attach to a KMS key. In this policy statement, we're granting a role called encryption app access to a number of actions on this key. Principals that can assume this role are allowed to perform the actions listed in the policy statement which are the cryptographic actions for encrypting and decrypting data with a CMK. So let's switch over to the AWS Management Console, and I'll give you a demo of how to interact with KMS using the command line. So here we are in the KMS Console. First, we have AWS Manage Keys. Anytime you interact with an AWS service that has integration with KMS and use that encryption, you'll see an alias generated for that service here. So you'll see we have integrations with ACM, SNS, S3, and so on. Again, these are managed by AWS and you don't have control over them. Next, we have our customer managed keys. Now, I don't have any keys yet. I'm going to go to the command line and start creating some. So I have a terminal here in an EC2 instance that I previously configured with the AWS configure command. And this EC2 instance has full administrative access to my account. Now, remember, KMS is a regional service. All the commands that I'm going to run are in the US East 1 or Northern Virginia region per my own configuration. You're free to use any other region of your choosing. But understand that with KMS, the concept of regional is important. For example, if I have an object in S3 that's encrypted with a CMK in one region, and I want to move that object to another region, I need to decrypt the object, move it to the other region, and then re-encrypt it with a different CMK, a CMK in that other region. So our first command is AWS KMS create key, and then we want to give that key a description. We'll just call this ACG Demo CMK for a Cloud Guru Demo Customer Master Key. Pretty straightforward. Now, this returns a number of values. The most important to note is the key ID right here. Now, I'm actually going to copy this off to a scratch document because we're going to use it in the next command. From here, we're going to create what's called an alias. Now, you can think of an alias as a shortcut to a key. Aliases can be used to point to different keys using the same name which facilitates key rotation or swapping keys out without having to change your code. To do this, we'll call AWS KMS create alias, and we need to specify a target key ID. This is the key ID returned by the previous command. So just so I don't make any mistakes, I'm going to paste that in here. And now we need to give it an alias name. Now aliases all have to be prefixed with alias forward slash, and I'll call this ACG demo. Close quotes. Now, if I did this right, I should be able to do AWS KMS list keys, and you'll see the key we created right here. Now, if we go over to the KMS console, this will be a little easier to read. So we'll do a refresh, and you can see the ACG demo alias. Now, if we go into this key, you could see the key policy. This is identical to what I showed you just a few minutes ago. We're granting the root account access to all actions on this key. You can also specify a rotation policy. Now, if you check this box, this will automatically rotate the CMK every year. For AWS managed keys, those are rotated by AWS every three years. So now let's go back to the command line and let's start using this key. I'm just going to clear the screen. Let's say I want to encrypt a text file. We'll just write out the string, this is a secret message, to a file called topsecret.txt. Let's just make sure it has the contents we're looking for. And next, we want to call AWS KMS encrypt and we want to specify either the key ID or the alias. I'll specify alias because it's much easier to remember. ACG demo. This is the key that we just created in the previous step. And next we need to specify plain text because we're using a local plain text file. So file colon slash slash topsecret.txt. And we want our output in text format. And we want to get back the value called ciphertext blob. So this will encrypt the topsecret.txt file using the ACG demo CMK that we created in the previous step, and it's going to output the ciphertext blob in base64 encoded form. Now, when you work with KMS at the command line like this, 
you're almost always going to be working with Base64 encoded data like this. Now we want to take this encrypted blob, Base64 decode it, and save that raw encrypted binary data to a local file. We could do that with this command here. It's identical to the previous command, except we're piping the output to the base64 decode command and writing the output to topsecret.txt.encrypted. And if we cat that file, we could see it's a mess of binary junk. And that's exactly what we're expecting. Now we could do the reverse. We could decrypt that local file using our CMK. Now the encrypted file itself is not base64 encoded, as you can see. So now to decrypt this file, we need to specify AWS KMS decrypt ciphertext blob, and note that we're using file B instead of file. This is because the encrypted data here is in binary form, not base64 encoded ASCII. Our output format is text, and we want to query the plain text attribute of the data that comes back. So like I mentioned before, anytime we work with KMS at the command line, we're almost always going to be working with base64 encoded data. So we need to go ahead and decode that. So we'll pipe that output to base64 dash dash decode, and we get our decrypted data. This is a secret message. Notice that we didn't have to specify the CMK. That's because anytime you use a CMK to encrypt a file, there's a reference back to the CMK that encrypted the data embedded inside the data. Now, I mentioned earlier that CMKs are used to encrypt and decrypt data up to four kilobytes in size. Well, what if you want to encrypt a data file that's larger than four kilobytes? To do that, we can use something called a data encryption key or DEK. So to do that, we'll call AWS KMS generate data key. We'll specify the alias to our key. And then we need to specify an algorithm. This is referred to as key spec. And we'll use AES 256. So this returns the plain text data key and also an encrypted with the specified CMK version of the data key. The encrypted version is referred to as a ciphertext blob. You want to store the return ciphertext blob. You'll need that later. The ciphertext blob has metadata which tells KMS which CMK was used to generate it. And you can use the plain text data key to encrypt any amount of data, so you're not hindered by that 4 kilobyte limitation. But you want to throw away the plain text data key and be sure to store the ciphertext blob along with your encrypted data. This ensures that the encrypted data won't be compromised as long as the plain text data key is destroyed after each encryption or decryption process. At best, someone can get to the ciphertext blob, but unless they can call KMS to decrypt it, the encrypted data cannot be decrypted with just the ciphertext blob. This is what's referred to as envelope encryption. So while KMS does support sending data up to 4 kilobytes to be encrypted directly by KMS, envelope encryption can offer significant performance benefits. When you encrypt data directly with KMS, it has to be transferred over the network. For large data files, this can be really inefficient. Envelope encryption reduces the network load since only the request and delivery of the much smaller data key go over the network. The data key is used locally in your application or encrypting AWS service, avoiding the need to send the entire block of data to KMS and suffer network latency. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover about KMS as it pertains to the exam. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If not, move on to the next lesson. Thanks.